Uh, very good evening uh, to our viewers. Thank you for making time and uh, being with us tonight on uh, the evening review. My name is uh, Toivo Njabela. Tonight on the platform, we are joined by Jephthah Guherimo. He is uh, an activist uh, around the issues of uh, Herero Nama genocide and of course also an author of a book uh, whose title I will share later. But um, Jephthah is here tonight to reflect on a, a series of, uh, or a lecture that is being held in honor of the late uh, Kadenambo Kadenambo. He's a former cabinet minister, a businessman, and perhaps also a, an activist in his, his, his own right. Thank you, Jephthah, for coming back to the platform. I had you here maybe more than a year ago, but uh, thank you for making time. Why Kadenambo? of all uh, the Herero marshals, you know, the people who are fighting uh, the battles for the Herero people. What do I say? What's the, what's the, question? The, the, the question is, why are the number, are the number? Oh, um, there are so many of uh, people who fought for, uh, who passed on, who fought for this struggle, but uh, we thought that uh, he, he, the lecture is fitting for him because uh, he was so passionate in terms of uh, public uh, lecture and as you know he spent most of the time here debating or advocating about this issue so uh, there are so many of them but we felt that he's uh, uh, he needs to be honored mm -hmm. because uh, in light of the German president statement that he made at the uh, as a tribute to the late president yeah, yeah. Uh, he would have reacted and so I think that we my organization the foundation thought that it is uh, best for us to uh, honor him with this lecture. It's going to be one of the lectures, um, but we spoke to the family and they will be having many, many lectures, uh, maybe yearly, on uh, public issues that are pertinent to the public mm -hmm. of Namibia, not necessarily genocide. Wonderful. So the this uh, lecture series um, it's an event where different people will speak uh, to a particular subject, or what is uh, the anticipated uh, format of? Uh... Well, the topic of the event is the joint declaration. Uh, is the joint declaration basically uh, done deal, and is it does it meet the needs, the 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 aspirations and interests of our area Nama people? Mm. So we have uh, Professor Hennings uh, from uh, Sweden. Who have written extensively on this issue. We have a human rights lawyer, John Nauta, uh, at UNAM, is going to be speaking. And so um, I have invited actually many to mention of them, mm -hmm. and some of them declined. And also, I have uh, we have invited the Namibian government, mm -hmm. uh, the Ambassador uh, Tonada Itenge Mvula, but unfortunately, she says she's not going to be, she's not available, but I have reached out to the director. Ambassador Nanda to uh, give me a replacement to present their point of view. And mm -hmm. then I spoke to the German embassy. We invited them and they are still in the process to evaluate maybe mm -hmm. whether they should or should not attend. Mm -hmm. And uh, But regardless, we have reached out to many uh, groups and uh, organizations and government representatives to come and uh, share their point of view, their multiple perspective on this issue. Mm -hmm. It's the only time we I think of a meeting or discussion of this nature could, should, uh, will take place if they show up. Yeah, wonderful. Um, why do you think this subject is so important? Uh, you have uh, invited uh, the, the few names that you mentioned are really high profile intellectuals and, and, and social commentators and whatnot. Um, why do you think the conversation is important? Well, the issue is important because uh, when you uh, listen or read carefully uh, the German president's statement, he alluded to the fact that the, uh, he, will, he may come back and offer formal apology, uh, meaning that to the German government, the issue is done. And to us, the Ovahero and number of people, the issue is not done yet and is not even close to being done. And so uh, we want to know, like, what is it? What is it done? And we have to, we invited the German, our own government to come and explain themselves, pronounce themselves on this issue. Mm. And uh, remember also our late president, 
made a strong statement about Germany's stance on uh, on the Palestinian uh, siding with the Israel on the on the Palestinian issue. So there's a lot of to untangle to mm. untangle and uh, to discuss like what uh, our late president's statement meant, and then here uh, the German president alluding that he was ready to sign the uh, agreement. Mm. So it's very important because it's an issue that will affect the Namibian politics in years to come if it's not resolved properly. Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be resolved in a manner that is very inclusive. Yeah. When you're saying that um, to Namibia and uh, to the descendants of the affected communities that this matter is not done, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, first of all, we were not party to the agreement or to the tentative agreement, what you call. Yeah. And we agreement does not meet our demands. And the agreement still speaks about grants and projects. Mm. And uh, this is not in line with international law. Uh, we are talking about the genocide. And so the payment mm. is obviously reparation as um, Mr. Venani stated in response to Mr. Stenmaier. So if you are talking about projects and grants, then we are not done. Mm. So we are not meeting our aspiration because our original aspiration and it's still our aspiration is for the German government to atone with your formal apology mm. and at the same time commit to reparations uh, to restore and repair what they have been destroyed. Yeah, grants and, um, and, and, and projects, in, in practical terms, what, what do you want to, be? Okay, of course you spoke about atonement, which is not a, a material thing, but in terms of material things, why is it, uh, why is projects and, not, and um, what did you mention? Grants. And, and grants. Why are those not uh, sufficient? What is it that, uh, what about that that is sort of an insult? We have been uh, through the projects before when they had the so-called uh, the special in initiative, they gave like $100 million. And then they bought people chicken and goats uh, to be exchanged if they grow, if they multiply the exchange. So we have gone through that. And mm -hmm. of course, you are Namibian. You know some people who have taken projects for poultry. Have you seen those people selling uh, their eggs in the supermarket, pick and pay, or shop right? No. Mm -hmm. You only see the pro a project uh, uh, benefits of people selling eggs in the streets. What we want is for us uh, to determine as Namibians and as Namibian people to determine the destiny of all the reparation funds. Mm. And that means if at all we can send our students to universities with that money, if at all we can um, get our students to uh, our young people to be involved in an entrepreneurship and get some loans, where do you think that they get the loans? At this point, not even a single young person can get a loan from the bank. Yeah. So that's what we mean by reparation. We have to determine our own destiny as opposed to being dictated like we are going to give us grants. And mind you, it's over 30 year period. So we have to go back to Germany every year to justify uh, so-called uh, grants as to what happened to that project money. That's how projects work. Mm -hmm. And that's so very insulting given the, the magnitude of the of the genocide that you have inflicted on the people. And we are educated enough, we are leading ourselves, and so we are a free country, mm -hmm. and Germany has no business to tell us they are going to give us grants over a 30-year period or project money. Yeah. the My, my, my understanding, Jephthah, is that uh, the that joint declaration has been packed. Um, we don't know now, of course, the, or I don't know, the, the the status going forward, but it seems to be that from the Namibian side of things, even government, which you generally do not agree with on this matter, the matter has been packed. Uh, are we saying that, um, and, and the Germans, I seem, they seem to understand now that the Namibians are not happy and that somehow we have to go back to the drawing board. Uh, what do you want to see happening again? Do, must we tear this one up completely, throw it in a dustbin, and start afresh? Do we build on this one? What do well, we do? Uh, good that you have that information and the issue has been packed, but uh, there is not. I have not read any official statement from our government that this issue is now on the side. 
-hmm. And contrary to what uh, President Stenmeyer made, uh, that he will come to apologize and formal apologize. So that, but what I want is for the Namibian government to come to the affected communities and sit down and we construct our agenda and our team to negotiate. Mm. And so this, we have to resolve it in-house first. Yeah. We cannot just go, yeah, we are going to Germany. No, we have to come with us and develop our own common agenda as Namibian, in particular the Ohio and Nama people with our own government and develop a common agenda to, to move forward. There is no question mm. about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to that subject uh, in a moment, but uh, what is it that the German president said that seemed to have really unsettled a lot of people within the Ovaherero and Nama communities, and perhaps the whole of Namibia. What is it that he said that? Uh, well, he specifically said that uh, he alluded to the statement that if, unfortunately, during the tribute on uh, his speech, that it is unfortunate that our late president is not going to be here when he returned to apologize, meaning apology was contingent about the joint declaration. So to them, the joint declaration is done. It's a matter of coming because the first process was for him to come to, G to Namibia and apologize. Mm -hmm. So he's assuming that this is done. And so that's the impression that we get. That, that, and at the same time, we know very well that the joint declaration does not include reparation. As I said, it includes grants and uh, projects money. Mm -hmm. So that is what is offensive, that are they still moving forward on this matter? At the same time, he's saying these things when the nation is mourning, it's part of his tribute, tribute. and it would, people were unsettled about that to make such a huge statement that cannot be verified by government officials. None of the government officials responded to that particular issue mm. that is coming back. So that's why people are unsettled and uh, waiting to hear like what's next. Yeah. Is the issue around the president's remark that the German president's remarks, is the issue about his ex, he, what he said specifically or that he raised the genocide occasion in that moment? Because people, there are people who seem to suggest that no, uh, you know, we are mourning the president and you come here and talk about genocide. And in my view, to, the, to those, I think, uh, I'm thinking to myself, if the men had come here and not say anything at all about genocide and pretended that there's no that big issue that is still pending and come here and, and talk about how wonderful Hage Gengop was and not touch on that, the people will say, but you know, what's happening? Why is he not saying anything at, at all about genocide? So is the issue the fact that uh, he mentioned genocide or is his choice of words that you were not happy with? Well, the issue uh, with different communities and uh, in Namibia moans differently. Yeah. And uh, so he may have touched on the other community that this is not appropriate for you to say that. And this is not appropriate time to make that statement given that the person you are referencing about is not able to respond and you are being selective with your tribute. Mm. If you had talked about the issue of the late president uh, being so forcefully talking about the Germany siding with Israel during for the for the during the Palestinian genocide while they're committing what basically genocide in Palestine, then people may have clapped for him, but he should have remained silent in my opinion. And for him, as you said, the issue is packed, and so why is he bringing an issue that is packed? Mm -hmm. Or he could have said something different that we are still have a lot of work to do. We are going back and to try to iron our differences in honor of our late president. Yeah. So there were so many statements that he could have made, but he chose to make a statement that implicate uh, that uh, the joint declaration is done and he may, came back, he may come back soon. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. We go for a quick uh, break and uh, return uh, with uh, Jephthah Guherimo.
the evening uh, review continues now after the going back to the joint declaration why do i have a feeling that there is many isolated groups each fight because you you know everybody seems to be speaking the same language mm. on this issue but like in your case now we have your foundation is leading this conversation on its own if you go to the OTA uh, the chiefs they are doing the same if you go to the USA the herald communities they say guy or two they also doing the same and this islands of conversations of yeah is it helpful is it not uh, more helpful if uh, people spoke in one voice as a united front rather than this segmented and fragmented uh, groupings yeah there's a lot of uh, what you call fragmented groups but they speak on one language on this issue mm. and that germany should pay reparations and that the current joint declaration was not inclusive of the Ovairo and Nama people. Uh, and so that is what we talk about. Yeah. But in uh, last time I told you, like uh, when the impact of genocide on a community that experienced it, uh, psychological, is very ongoing and is a generational trauma. So you cannot uh, expect a society, a group of people that will have gone through that to be sitting in one place and speaking about one thing. Mm. And at the same time, you also have to distinguish between OTAs and um, other traditional authority. Those are political entity of the head of people. So they have the right to speak. But when you're talking about organizations like my foundation, is an advocacy foundation, which other groups are doing. But I am also, as I told you, and I was a former teacher and author. Mm. And what I have seen in the gap of Namibian history books is the absence of the history, this particular history. Mm. So my focus is more on education, hoping to write books that will reach out to different communities in mm. Namibia, students, so that they know. I have met a lot of uh, Namibian students in uh, the US and elsewhere. And when I talk, give conversation, they say like, how come I have never heard of this? Mm. And this is likewise in Germany. How come they say, that's the same thing. How come I never heard about this? So we are failing to educate the people by uh, not teaching history. So my, uh, my foundation as one of these series is more educational yeah. to create a debate that will expand. But I cannot speak for other foundation, but they are doing an important work in terms of advocacy yeah. on this issue. In terms of the principle is the same, but it, it's a question of like, where are they advocating from? Yeah, yeah. And no, no, it's good that uh, you said that. I'm, I'm asking because... Um, I mean, it's good that you are promoting discourse, you know, and it's not a linear sort of discourse. You want even those who might be adversaries of, yeah. of your conversation to also come to, to to the table. I've had some people in this chair uh, on this subject, as some of them from the German-speaking forum, for example, and, and people have come for me, you know, people have said to me, how can he give a platform to these guys? And I think it's important that we also understand what their thinking is, so that when you uh, when you strategize, when you design your approach, at least you also know that uh, you design it with every all, all these th factors in mind. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that you said, for example, that you have also sent your request to the German uh, German embassy that they are likely to be dis defensive during that lecture. Mm. But it's, it's important for yeah. your community to understand that. Yeah. Now, the issue that seemed to be really refusing to die is the structure of the people that are speaking for Namibia in this matter. Mm. Uh, the 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 descendants of the two communities feel always that uh, they are excluded from the conversations that uh, someone else
perhaps who is not even directly affected by this thing is leading that conversation. Um, how do we make sure? Because the, the argument from government has been, look, we have representatives from those communities. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ngavire, for example, at the time, he came from the Herero community. There are people from the Nama community. Are those not Namas and Hereros enough? Mm. Well, the people are Namas enough. I don't, from my perspective, it is not the question of who is who in the negotiation. Yes, of course, Dr. Uh, late Dr. Gavir was a Herero in the Nama community, but the process, how do you construct the team and what agenda is the team going to promote? Mm. In the absence of that, people are going to be resentful. But the thing is like what the government should do, what I advise, they should go back to the people mm. and construct a representative team. Things are going to, it's the same as um, similar when the liberation uh, struggle, you know, who Swapo is going to represent people. Is that the only country? In the end, Swapo sat down with all political party and drafted the constitution that we still cherish today. Yeah. Is that not doable? We have this experience to do good things mm. and we can do it. It's just the belief and the ability to in, be inclusive. Yeah. But right now we are being exclusive. And this thing, the issue of uh, multilateral conversation based on other groups, even uh, 10 hero groups, has been done before in other countries. Mm. So there's a lot of examples. So I'm not afraid of that. But unless there is a willingness on the part of the government to consult and to make sure that the team that is going to negotiate is representative and is endorsed or representative of the interests of hero and Nama people. Uh, let's say uh, we have a distinguished professor from Harare who is a good negotiator. Yeah, we can say, yeah, sit down in negotiation. Mm -hmm. A distinguished professor from Namibia who is not a Shiro speaking or Nama people, sit down in negotiation because you are adding skills. But in terms of the political appointees, that's where people have these reservations like yeah. who is he, what, uh, what agenda is he going to promote or she going to promote. But uh, those things can be eye on that. We have been there. We have done that before. And yeah. then so if, if, um, if it was up to Jephthah, how do we weed out this word, this phrase, this slogan, nothing for us without us? I think that it goes along those lines. Nothing for us without us or something yeah. like that. What must happen to make sure that that phrase goes away, that people are now happy, they feel that uh, it is for us and with us? Uh, what is it that must happen? And so at this point, it's a consultative process and a very uh, skillful consultative process to approach those individuals in those groups to say like, what could be the answer? They have answers. All these groups have answered to that. What can we do to make this team work? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be done. And so that's the way I'm going to start. And then we can craft the process that is inclusive, multilateral. But at the same time, you know, we are negotiating with uh, Germany. And so we need to be aware that they have experience in these issues so you, the UN uh, have expertise, expertise. So is the African Union. I was in mm -hmm. Ghana, they invited me and they are willing to lend their legal assistance to the Namibian for this cause. So there are a lot of people who want to help us and we cannot just say no. Mm -hmm. Because at the same time, you have to understand that our government sided with South Africa and make an oral argument at the International Court of Justice in favor of the South African argument. What mm. is so different from our government to take the same decision in order for, to take the Germany to court everywhere if Germany is refusing to meet the, the demands of our hero people? So mm. that to us showed like, oh, our government can really do this. We were proud of that decision for them to help South Africa. Mm. It's a solidarity that is needed and it was the right thing to do. But then the question to our hero and our people is like, so if you can do this, why is it that they are fighting half-hearted against this, uh, the German on our particular on the issue of genocide? Mm. So there's a lot of things to, for us to untangle and there's a consultation and knowing that the process has failed. As you said, it has been packed somewhere. Maybe the process didn't meet the, pro uh, the people. And so we can go back to the table, whether we are going to draft or to reevaluate what is negotiated. That's a different issue for those who are in the team. Yeah. The, the final question to you then, Jeff, uh, is um, the, I mean, people talk about institutional memory, which is essentially to say that um, it is beneficial 
when somebody with uh, a background understanding of a particular subject is involved. So in this case, President Hage Gengob uh, sort of became the first president really to, to add more fuel to these conversations. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, people feel that uh, he negotiated badly. Some say even that he negotiated in bad faith. But at least he was the first one to formally engage and get us something in black and white. Mm -hmm. But he's dead now. Mm -hmm. uh, may his soul rest in peace, but he's no longer here. Do you, does that, will that be a setback? Uh, in in the in the in this uh, process because now we have a, a new president who will be serving until a certain period of time and then a new president will emerge from november we don't know who that is does this series of events affect the process in your view well i don't see that that way one can look at that way but i said that the uh, joint declaration had set up a conversation, a discussion that will never go away. First of all, Germany, of course, they apologize after the joint declaration. And even though we are not happy with the apology, mm -hmm. so they will never retract. Let's say in light of the president now is gone, we are going to retract on that. Uh, first of, and second of, uh, secondly, the Germany has said like, well, we agree it was a genocide, but we're going to give you grants and projects. So meaning that they have some commitment, half-hearted commitment to uh, to pay, mm -hmm. but not what we want, reparations. So the conversation will start where it is, not necessarily erase the legacy of the president. Yeah, the debate has, it's, he put it in motion, he put it in motion. So the question is like, how do we make it better? It's mm -hmm. just like any other uh, first president, first New Yorker, where like he made a mistake, but then Pohamba corrected, and then the late president or late president corrected. So we can build from that, and how we build it is up to us. And it's no need for us to blame the late president way that he did this. Otherwise, it's just like blaming Mandela's and all. We have time to construct our own history now. Mm -hmm. He left us here, and so we. It is our time to do something to make it better. Absolutely. So, yes. Okay, okay. Thank, thank, thank you, you for making time. All right, thank you very much. That's uh, Jeff Guherimo. He is uh, a, a German genocide, or oh, is a vig, is a, an activist around uh, German genocide in Namibia. He's an author and he's also a president of uh, a foundation that is dealing with the subject. Thank you for watching.